Nicholas Pesch. Nicholas Pesch. I'm here with Nicholas Pesch, who's at Sundance with um, his directorial debut. Um, congratulations on your 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 first baby. Thank you. Thank but you. but we, um, I had the chance to discover you uh, just prior to Sundance um, in October-ish, and I saw that you have a large palette. You have a lot of tools in your toolbox um, with concerns to all these great videos that you made. Um, how did you come into the visual arts? Before we even talk about the feature film, what's your rapport with, with cinema? What's, what's your rapport with, with yeah, exactly the visual? Um, my parents were movie buffs and they, they raised me to love movies. My dad was a fashion designer and uh, my mom was an eye doctor. And little bits of those definitely come into play in this movie. But um, from an early age I always drew and I would see my dad drawing and I would draw. Um, and I just loved that you could create other worlds for people. Mm -hmm. and. As I got older, I got into theater, and I was an actor for a little while in high school, and then um, when I went to film school, it was like an explosion of like, wow, I can really use visuals even you know, more so or independently from storytelling and do this whole other experience of you know, this, other, this other world, this mm -hmm. other universe that I could create. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by that. It's like a godlike experience, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it was always um, very, you know, I was attracted to painting and all sorts of visual art. So in making this first movie, I knew that it wanted, I wanted to be very strong stylistically. And doing all the music videos gave me an opportunity to kind of play around with all my different stylistic tricks mm -hmm. and work with my crew members and kind of figure out what we did well and what the videos were always just kind of a stepping stone to make getting to make a movie. Um, you know, as you could see from my videos, they they're more cinematic and they look more like you know homage to movies and stuff. And it was always I always knew that it was just a way for me to explore what I was doing until someone had enough faith in me to you know, to actually let me make a movie. And those videos, one of the other Taishi videos, never mind the end, was the first video that I showed Josh. Okay. And I remember um, he was like so nervous to have to watch one of my videos, worrying that it was gonna be bad, and he was gonna be like, oh God. Um, but he loved it. And so the videos were a great calling card. And yeah, it was a vote of The movie came about, um, I guess, creatively or mm -hmm. more just like well, everything? Well, the, the gist of, of the, the, the film first, then the, the writing process, and then the visual conceptualization. Sure. Like, like, because you have, as you say, there, there is very strong, bold yeah. aesthetic choices that are made here. Um, when I, I was, a few years ago, I met Josh Mond working on James White, mm -hmm. and um, we spent a lot of, the movies about his mother, and we spent a lot of time talking about our moms, and I, my mom, uh, like I said, was an eye doctor, and um, she's a little new agey, um, okay. and she, and by a little, I mean a lot, um, <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, she very much, like, taught me, um, about science and anatomy when I was at a young age and in the movie there's the cow dissection you're, and you're lucky for that and we did me and my mother did that cow dissection and we dissected the eye and in the film it's actually my hands as the uh, hand double oh, really, for the really, dissection really, yeah. um, but I would tell Josh these stories about like having cow eyes on my uh, table and my mom introducing me to scary movies and you know being so young and watching things like the Twilight Zone and Hitchcock um, and I would tell him these stories, like, your mom sounds crazy, and it's like, she's not. But, you know, all these little bits and pieces um, made a really fascinating character in this other world. Uh -huh. um, and so I started to, you know, sort of take these images and take them out of context. And I was always, I fell in love with movies watching Hitchcock and David Lynch and Stanley Kubrick. And... There was a period of time when genre movies were made by artists mm -hmm. and you could make a horror movie and like The Shining and to this day generations of people love that film mm -hmm. and 
I missed those days of when genre films could also be art films. Yeah. And that was also very much from my parents and um, foreign films and the, the yellow subtitles on black and white films, you know, is so iconic to watching, you know, old Italian movies. And there was all these cinematic inspirations that I wasn't seeing in movies elsewhere that... Um, I was excited by and wanted to wanted to do so when I sat down with my crew I was showing them Charles Lawton movies and Val Luton movies and all these old movies that they all love but no one had seen before mm -hmm. and um, and it was exciting for all of us to kind of like rediscover something that has been lost in movies and you know we we did it in black and white to evoke that sort of nostalgia while not necessarily trying to make it look like we made it in the 70s, uh -huh. but just evoke what that choice used to do and try to do that same thing now. Um, There's loads of cinematic references. I, I mean, I, I was thinking a lot of films while, while watching this film, um, specifically in terms of uh, uh, some, pl uh, some um, narrative ideas. I was thinking of Lynch's earlier works. I was thinking of, uh, I think it was Eraserhead. Yeah. And... Um, and the Elephant Man, actually, just just because of the formation of, of the, Absolutely. one of your characters. One great thing um, that uh, my cinematographer, Zach Kruberstein, always taught me. I've been working with him since I was 17 years old. Okay. Um, and he, when we were in film school, I would show him all these movies. And it's like, I want to do this shot. I want to do this shot. I want to do this shot. And he really taught me. It's like, we can be inspired by the look and the feel and all this. But let's not just steal this shot. Like, they already did this shot. Let me think of something that does the same thing as this, mm -hmm. that does what we like about this in a new way. And I think that, particularly in this movie, we did a lot of cool tricks that a lot of times are disguised and you don't even realize how difficult it would have been to get the shot, but Zach invented a whole new body rig to get the shot of Charlie coming out of the barn when it's mounted to yeah, his yeah. back. And that's the sort of stuff that excites me. And like, yeah, it feels like the innovation that they were doing in the Let's 70s. talk about your lead actress slash character. Uh, I think she, I mean, perhaps it's a dark contrast of, of playing with black and white or, or grays, uh, uh, gray layers, but what a great face. Like, 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 like structurally, um, uh, she just has an enigmatic, like you're just drawn to her face. Um, how did you get her involved specifically, and how did you design the character? With, I, uh, with I worked with Kika on a music video, okay. and she came in for the audition. It was just like an open casting call, and there's a really interesting charm and quality about her as a real person. Mm -hmm. And um, she was relatively new to America, and she had this amazing accent, and as you can see in the movie, this great face. and. The music video was like weird and psychedelic, so I was like, yeah, great. I cast her, I loved working with her. And then a few months later, I was uh, gearing up to make a short that would later become this movie. Mm -hmm. And my plan was that I had been writing the early, like the early versions of this movie, and I was having trouble trying to figure out the character, and I wanted to just go out and do a short, partially as a proof of concept for my crew, mm -hmm. um, but also to kind of have time to explore what the movie and the character could be. So we went out to this house um, and shot a little scene from the, that would later be from the movie. Okay. And we kind of just made it up as we went along. And I, I thought, you know, I thought of Kika after having worked on the video. So I asked her to play this role. And we talked about it. And originally I wasn't going to have her do it in Portuguese, but then in the short, I was like, you know what, when you have a great actor who does something and brings something unique to the character, let them do whatever it is that they do naturally really well. Mm -hmm. So I had her speak in Portuguese. It was absolutely amazing. And um, from that point on, I really worked with her uh, through every stage of writing. And each draft I'd have, I'd call her, I'd give it to her, we'd sit, we'd talk about the character. And it was nice to be able to have what felt like the character sitting on my couch with me and we could have a conversation. She would read a scene and be like, well, I don't know that I do that. And we could have a conversation about it. And 
then, you know, so when we got to the movie, we had had a year of discussions about this character. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't even know this when I cast her, but her real name is Francisca. Uh, the lead, the main character in the movie's name is Kika's real name. Oh my God, that's life. funny. Um, and, and yeah, and we worked great together, and she adds such a interesting is that, complexity. Is that she latches on to all these living things like that like she has a lot of a lot of difficulty um of, of having a, a living a solo life um i was wondering if you could talk about uh, that specifically about her inability to let go and the extremes that she she goes through in order to um to to yeah keep her play things i guess i think that francisca is she's a the age that she is when she loses her mother mm -hmm. for her whole life. Mm -hmm. That is the extent of her maturity level. And mind you, she is a very mature young girl, but by the time she's an adult, she's still just a mature young girl. Yeah. And she treats Charlie the way you would treat a wounded dog that your dad accidentally hit with the car and she nurses him back to life mm -hmm. and cares for him. And she really does have a lot of love and it's just misguided. And it comes from, you know, her mom taught her a lot of things that she didn't necessarily understand the context of because of her age. And then being sort of not only ripped away from having that parental guidance, but then also being forced into trauma, all of those interesting and wonderful intentions and the love just finds home in really, really disturbing, misguided ways. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you see her even when she's an adult, she, there's this doll that she has uh -huh. that is always with her. Uh -huh. And she's just a little girl playing with her dolls in her dollhouse. I get the sense that, that you're, you got many ideas that you would yes. want to throw out there in the world. So oh, what, what can we expect to you in terms of a, a filmmaker in the, in the near future? I hope that the movie can, you know, have a life and people will see it. And I hope that... You know, guys like me who were watching weird movies when they were 16 years old with their friends and just wanting something weird and different and something that was going to mess with your mind um, and give you a crazy emotional experience that you can't explain. Like, I hope that those kids like my movie mm -hmm. and come out to see the movie and tell all their friends, like, yo, you like weird movies? you got to see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, I want to, um, I want to continue to make these sort of genre bending, undefinable movies. I have another, uh, I have another project in the works that, um, is based on a novel okay. and it's a, it's a thriller and, um, yeah, I'm interested in playing with people's emotions in Great. the darker side of things. Great. Well, thank you very much.